think it's anything to do with a certain religion, do you think? No, is that anything like that? No, it's no, more to do no. with a kind of a drug, isn't it? It's a drug. Yeah, well, those that take it want to be, ought to be ashamed well. of themselves. According to The Sun, there were thousands of empty ecstasy wrappers littering the floor of the 250-foot-long hangar. Drugs, sex, sensation. Some newspapers have called Acid House Music a sinister and evil cult which lures young people into drug-taking. The message is certainly getting across. The organisers kept the location secret until the very last moment, which was the main reason, according to the papers, why there were so few police here and they were unable to act. Drug-crazed kids, some as young as 12, boogied for eight hours yesterday at Britain's biggest ever ecstasy bash. The party took place here, infiltrated by reporters from the Mail and the Sun. There's, there's meant to be a drugs-related craze. What do you know about acid house music? It must affect the brain in some way. Unless it's just the music that it does it. Oh, All no. them lights flashing don't do you any good either, do it? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't even go in the no. pub where them lights are. Oh, no, they drive no. you mate, then they? Called. Hello and welcome to the 88 podcast with yours truly, Wayne Anthony. On today's podcast, we've got some absolute legends. Uh, they did the, some of the biggest parties, illegal parties and legal parties in the history of Acid House. When we speak about Acid House and we speak about large scale events, the only few people that are really can, you can even discuss that even are on this topic are energy and sunrise. And today's show we've got, it's a real rare treat, I have to say as well, because we've got Jeremy Taylor and we've got Tim Tin, two of the iconic founders of energy. And so welcome to the show, lads. How you doing? Hi, Wayne. Thanks for having us. Hi, Wayne. Hey. So it's funny how time flies because you know, I've known you boys for over 30 years now. It's crazy, isn't it? 32 years, probably. Isn't it? You know, 32 years. Can you imagine, you know? And, you know, I remember I bumped into Tintin in a few places around the world uh, since those days. You know, we've parted in a couple of countries and, we, you know, we bump into each other on the lecture circuit. But the last time I saw you, Jeremy, was actually, remember you did that event at your house, the Nobleman and Wench's Ball, oh, 19, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1995. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was a gas, you know. We came down, yeah. we all went to Angel Costumers. You know, yeah. me, t Tony, Tony had actually um, rented free limousines out for us all. And, yeah. you know, he put a few crates of champagne in the limousines and he's like, right, we're all going. But we all went to Angel Costumers. You remember that? Yeah, you know, I think that was on the invite. I said, you've got to go to Angel. I've done yeah. a deal with them. And, every, and yeah, I think Dave Roberts in his full yeah. act. Was, was a sight. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was. Because that's who came down. Me, Dave, Tony, you know, and the girl Sarah King, little Sarah, Kai, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I remember what a great night that was, mate. That was a great party. Everyone was dressed to the nine. And I remember yeah. at one point I met a load of New York bankers, and you know we were all a bit slightly worse for wear. And I'd convinced them that you had some illegal elephants somewhere on the property. <laughs> Yeah. for yeah. about a half an hour i had them going i was saying look come on should we go and get them should we go and get them yeah. and they were like sweet yeah yeah sweet sweet yeah, yeah let's go let's go <laughs> so in the end it, all the girls butted in they're like no no but um but but i guess so go so your experience jeremy i guess came from you know gate crash a ball and staging all those events i mean at what point did you decide to, to go from gate crash a ball i mean i know don't get me wrong i know Davenport went and had a, you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> a bit yeah. of porridge. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, was that no, a deciding it, factor? It, or? It, was, it was a very clear thing. So uh, I, I was on holiday in South of France uh, uh, with, with Tintin and uh, he was telling me all about Sherman and the, this, this whole uh, sort of acid house thing going on. It was really underground. It was like a few hundred people. And uh, then I got got back from this holiday, and uh, my business partner Eddie Davenport uh, with the Gate Crash Balls had run off with all the money. Uh, <laughs> so I turned around to Tintin and said, well, "Tell me about more about these raves. Um, and, you know, let let let's do one together." Um, so uh, 
that. So we went about doing our first first one. And actually our first one was actually fully legal. It was in, at the Brixton Academy called Hypnosis. Um, cool. And I think we paid Paul Oakenfold 500 quid or something to play, which I remember at the time yeah. thinking- was That's a, a lot at that money. time, yeah. I did, I bumped into him years later and told him I thought it was a huge amount of money. I'll just sort it. Yeah, because he's like, you know, I'm a million pound now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so th- that, that was the point that I got involved and uh, Tintin was very much, right, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly. You know, we can't have sound systems like you used to have at the gate crash of balls. Uh, <laughs> it, it got to be a whole different level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so off we went on this sort of mad, magical tour, no, having no idea what was going to happen. So, uh, sure. yeah, no, and, and this, and, and I should mm. point out to everybody that where a lot of us, we, you know, we indulge fully indulged in that counterculture, you are completely free of drugs. So you actually experiencing, you were actually experiencing the real euphoria of that wave because you wasn't on drugs. So you was experiencing the true essence of it. Uh, yes. So, uh, I mean, through the whole thing, you know, I've never taken an ecstasy pill in my life. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, insane. I, I never and, knew that. And I don't know quite sort of what stopped me. Uh, there was no sort of moral thing about it. It was just, um, you know, I, I, I just enjoyed the, the whole organization and, and, and got my buzz from seeing people you know, standing on the stage and looking at all these yeah. people, with their hand in the air and just big smiles on their face. That yeah. was enough for me. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I remember was, that about you for sure. Yeah, and I was, and, and you yeah, know, I always thought maybe it's a good idea if there's the one sober person in the room. Uh, uh, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if Jeremy had been uh, partying like I was partying, I don't think we would have actually had a company. So. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the thing. There, there's that balance. There's that yin yang, yeah. isn't it? You know, and and so for you, Tintin, yeah. So h- how did you come about, Shulman? Well, I, I, you know, I was. I was very active um, in the London party scene. Um, I was going clubbing from the age of, you know, 15. I was going to places like um, Camden Palace and the, uh, you know, sort of a lot of the kind of electro and, and rare group yeah, and yeah. parties happening around around London. And um, and just so people know, I mean, you were 15. What what year was that? Because that's this is not eighty eight, is it? We don't yeah, want anyone to think you. When I when I started in eighty eight, I was only eighteen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I fifteen really was a few that. years earlier. Yeah. So is that electro electric ballroom and? Yeah, le- uh, electric ballroom. What was the place yeah. um, uh, opposite the Ritz? Um, oh, I can't remember. What about Lyceum and Lyceum and? Yeah, but and then I went from there to all the kind of you know the wags and the and the mud clubs and yeah uh, all the ch- uh, the kind of Chelsea uh, stuff, crazy Larrys, all the rock all the trendy stuff, stuff. yeah. Westworld, Philip, Philip Salon, Westworld, Salon. Enter the Dragon. I mean, literally, I yeah, was out. Enter the I Dragon, out, Westworld. Yeah, I was out every single night of the week. Sure, every single night. And and now is the thing. I mean, um, the whole Westworld. They they set a bit of a. Well, uh, they were actually they were actually the inspiration I took for production I, I, of energy. I see that. I, I, see I that. Yeah. you know, I'd been to those really really well produced parties that um, John sure. Coleman had done, um, and I want and, and I, Graham I, Ball, wasn't it? I want, and Graham Ball, yeah. and John Coleman, yeah. Um, uh, and I was also quite kind of close to those people, and a lot of people that you know were in that scene, sure. and that was the kind of scale of events that we wanted to put on as energy. For sure, because I've got a lot of because they they really went, they were totally detailed. I mean, I've still got a lot of the stickers. Amazing, amazing. You remember amazing. they were doing stickers, really stickers amazing design. Different, yeah. Um. Obviously, they were doing parties at places like the Academy. Uh, yeah. It was a bit of a different scene because of, it was. Yeah, right, it was different. It was yeah. right at the beginning of Acid House. I remember one Westworld. I think they had, you know, upstairs they had, they had a few DJs playing Acid House, but downstairs yeah. it was very much the rare. Well, it was group. trendy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the crowd itself, it was a super trendy um, crowd, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. much kind of, you know, West London, um, West End crowd, um, similar sort of crowd that you got with Philip Salon's parties. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a, it, that, that period of London clubbing was a really amazing time, actually, between, sure. you know, 80, 86 and 88, actually, was really special, that build up to Aspen. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, the pop scene the was clubs. massive. Yeah. It, yeah, it was being played in the clubs, but it was being played every third or fourth record by you know 
Uh, Noel Watson maybe would would throw a couple of acid house records in his sets. He used to play for West Westworld as well as well as Delirium. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so I was very much in the scene, and then I kind of stumbled into and uh, you know I I ended up going to Hedonism. Uh, yeah. In, Warehouse party. In, Warehouse party somewhere in West London, right at the beginning of 1988, and that just kind of blew my head off really. And then I was just completely converted acid house convert, and I was you know. I'd go to everything. So I'd Kling Street and show. Yeah. And and I guess that really set the pattern because that was like the business model. So you you've you've seen Westworld, you've seen how Graham Ball does it, you know, then you've gone to you, you know, you're at Brixton Academy, so you kind of know the format of Brixton Academy. But then you go to this really gritty warehouse and it's like that's really what you know brought you over so to that the was the side. energy right yeah. that was that was where the energy came from dance floor smoke strobes yeah yeah banging acid and, house proper acid house like and it wasn't there wasn't any fluffy music going on at that hedonism party it was proper sure acid um, and so and so then you were like mate i've got to get jeremy on this <laughs> <laughs> well well, I was partying and then, and you know, Jeremy and I went away on holiday together and we, we spent a week together and I was kind of telling him about it. And I think I was trying, I think, did we end up trying to like find an acid house party? Did we try to go to the cab or something like that? And I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think we did. <laughs> and I think there might even be something going on down there. But, but then when, when, uh, when we came back, um, when we arrived back, Jeremy had a driver at the time. Um, and when we came back, his driver wasn't there to pick him up. And it was just like, oh, what's going on? And then Jeremy got back home and um, basically his safe had been emptied, um, oh, wow. his office and, and, uh, and Eddie had basically totally ripped him off. Um, wow. And then it was kind of natural that, you know, I was like, Dude, forget I, I, about I've, him. Got a bit, yeah. I've got a creative sense of how this sh should work and I've got contacts and I know some DJs and of course, you know, your business you savvy. organize this because I'm not capable. Um, and, yeah, and yeah. It works, you know. I, it did work. I, I, did I, work. I handled the creative and Jeremy handled the organization. It, it, was, per really. it was a perfect combination. So, so the hypnosis then. So that was your first. You thought, okay, we'll do the Brixton Academy. Yeah. Yeah. A big thing to do first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't a Because Brixton success. Academy, I it mean. Got two and, and a half thousand people, yeah. didn't we, Jay? No, well, no, I think. It, well, its capacity is about four thousand. I think we were sort of three. No, we we, we did pretty well. Three thousand, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I and I remember every single night I would go to like ten different clubs, still in my suit. I remember. Handing out I remember. raving fights to all these ravers coming out all sweaty, and I, I'd be handing them in my pinstripe suit, handing them a, a flyer for hypnosis, and you know, literally just just did this every six, seven nights a week. And excellent. You know, I remember, you, mate. Promoting and, uh, well, that's what I tell people, you know, they don't realize that how in the early days, I always say that Jeremy and Tim Tim were in the trenches in the early days, mate. You know, they were kicking off doors, you know, alongside us a lot, you know, and they were doing, they put you, they put the work in, you know, it wasn't like they ever, because people seem to think, you know, people outside of the scene seem to think if you throw a load of money at something, it's then a, it's just going to miraculously organize create itself you know it still needs this like you said uh Tintin there still needs to be a creative element to it and it does need to be organized so from going from having done no parties apart from the you know the the, the parties the gate crasher ball to Brixton Academy I mean that was a big leap you know yeah. and hypnosis how, how'd you come around on the hypnosis name I can't remember I can't remember yeah. I can't even fly. I can't even find one of the old flyers for it. My one missing sure. flyer. Ah, <laughs> uh, I hate when that happens. They're, selling, got a few they're selling on eBay for about hundred quid, I think. They are. Yeah. This they're <laughs> insane money. I I, I often well, I get just, people. They send me flyers that are for sale on eBay. They've gone for over two hundred pound, and and they say, oh, you know, is this a fake one? Is it not a fake one? And yeah, because some of the Genesis uh, um, invite uh, flyers are, are some of the most valuable because they're because they're insane. rare. Right? Well, that was rare because we when we did our printing, I mean, you know yourself. I was thinking about this the other day, and I have mentioned this elsewhere. The first parties that we did, we you know, we'd do three hundred flyers max. You know, the last party we did. We did a, we did 150,000 flyers. I mean, you guys know all this stuff. We yeah. did 150,000 flyers, and we ran out of flyers two weeks before the event. Mm. <laughs> it's just insane, you know. We I had to we, we had photocopy. You know what we're like. You know how resourceful we all are. You know, 
so we photocopied loads mate i mean the printing guy because it because i think it was around a certain time of year where uh they had too many jobs and so they basically couldn't do any more and so we ended up just photocopying thousands of bloody flyers but uh yeah in those early days yeah flyer flyer for energetic uh, on ebay the other day because i realized i didn't didn't have one uh, so I found one and bought it. So I thought I've got to keep the collection. Uh, yeah. I got that and, and the rave game. Yeah, Remember yeah, that? yeah. Funny enough, yeah. the the rave yeah. game. I had one of those about fifteen years ago. Um, you know, Dave was working with the guy that did them or something. But yeah. all I know is Dave. He had a garage full of them. You know, and yeah. I was like, I said to him, you know, can I have a couple? And he gave me a couple. But I actually sold one for about I think about five hundred quid. But I will tell you what, though, that, that game, that rave game, and for anyone that's listening and that don't know, this was basically a board game that was created. And they had flyers and these, what they called, you know, these E-type things, <laughs> ecstasists or something they called it. Yeah, excellent. Jeremy's, Jeremy's going to get it. Excellent. Look, there it is. Look, there it is. <laughs> and, this, and this board game, it was actually banned. And there it is. But that was worth 500 quid. And it was about 10 years ago I sold it. So it's wow. got to be worth a grand now. But I'll tell you another little story about that rave game, yeah? When I got back from Ireland, I got a phone call from a uh, filmmaker, Gordon Mason. You know, remember Gordon? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. So I get this phone call from Gordon. And he says, he says, Wayne, you know Ken Tappenden? The, you know, the head of the police pay party unit. I'm just saying yeah. this for people who don't know. I know you guys know the head of the police pay party unit, chief superintendent. I, I said, yeah. He said, you know the game Rave? I said, yeah. He said, he's challenged you to a game of Rave. You know, you're up for it. And I film it. So I said, yeah, of course, you know. So he then called <clears throat> Kenneth Tappenden and said, no, Wayne Anthony. He said, yeah, he's challenged you to a game of Rave. I mean, <laughs> oh, I thought, he did it, he did it yeah, both times. I thought yeah. it was a, already a done deal, you know. So he says, yeah, I'll do it. He says, and do you want me to wear my uniform? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I said, if he wears a uniform, I'll wear a smiley t-shirt and a bandana. I mean, I, I didn't even wear a bandana then, you know, but I'd, I'll wear a bandana. And so he and I had this game of rave. It's on film. Gordon has it on film. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen it actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're playing a game of rave. It's just insane. And bless him, because he's a really nice bloke, isn't he? I mean, I'm sure you guys have met him. Yeah, yeah, no, I've met I, I yeah. him a number of times. He's tur- yeah, he's turned into a really lovely fellow, because once I saw that he was admitting the fault of the government in, you know, documentaries that he's appeared in later, I thought, yeah. well, he's quite fair, you know? Um, and so when I arrived, in fact, when I arrived to, to, to play this game with him, the first thing he said was, Hello, Wayne. The last time I saw you, you was running out the back door, climbing over fences with big black bags of money. <laughs> <laughs> and at the beginning of the game, bless him, right. he, he said to us, like, shall I let you win? Bless him. You know, I was like, no, Aww. mate, whoever wins, wins, you know, <laughs> I won. But, you know, but yeah, sorry, mate. I, 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 was I, at I a, went off. I was at a trade show in Birmingham at the NEC and this person walked past the stand that I was running and I looked at him and I thought, I'm sure I recognise you. I looked at his badge, um, and it's grey and bright. No way, dude! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because because you had some dealings with them, didn't you as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, anyway, I think he was sort of selling something. He wasn't not working for the government anymore. But uh, <laughs> he was very, he was very nice about everything. But uh, oh, you yeah. pulled him over, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'm Jeremy Taylor. Do you remember? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, how funny is that, yeah. mate? That is funny. Yeah. And um, obviously, Paul Staines as well. He became like Guido Fawkes, is it, or something? Guido Fawkes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, but going back, so the hypnosis, it was a good night. You had a good night. Um, you, it's, it's hypnosis. And then I guess that, you know, you get back to your place or whatever. Um, and then what you decide you're going to carry on? Yeah, I think we decided to do a couple of magical mystery tours, both of <laughs> yeah. which got raided. And I think that the I remember them. 
Yeah, the second of them, I think, Wayne, I think, you, didn't you get arrested or something? Or t some, yeah. something happened? No, there was a police element to it. I didn't get arrested, yeah. but there was a police element to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and the owners. Cause, and actually, cause, yeah, yeah. And the, the venue we were, were had taken over is now the uh, the Jaguar dealership. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and, the and the thing about that actual venue, because I have to say that, like, the first time I ever met you guys, it was actually outside there, like 1988. And I, at that time, I hadn't really been to any warehouse parties where you had meeting points and you had someone yeah. standing on the corner. And it, mm. so it was the first time. So we came around the corner. There was this guy standing there, you know, like shummed out, you know, the shum uniform type thing. <laughs> and um, we didn't go and say anything Actually. to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, you know. We didn't say anything to him and he didn't say anything to us. So we're thinking, is this where the party is? What? There's no cars. It's really, really quiet. And then someone said, no, you have to go and ask the guy. And so when we went and said, party? I said, party. He's like, yeah, yeah, mate. Blah, 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 blah. And then we met you guys. And then, and that was it, that magical mystery tour. Because yeah, it was all in buses. So yeah. we, we had to hire all these buses. That was and cool. Got the buses and off they went. And it was all filmed by uh, World in Action. And I love at the end of World in Action, they go, and we couldn't see any evidence of any drugs. Wow. And I was thinking, well, where were you the party hadn't started. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah you're that was the idea. You're like the, the main investigative program on yeah. TV at, at the time, and, and you couldn't see any sign of any drugs. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good to point that out, that World in Action, it, it was the premier news program of the time, and, and they did a lot of investigative journalism, um, which is odd that they said that, because they're, as, and is that the one where they follow, because the thing about those early documentaries is if you remember, they followed a lot of really young looking people, didn't they? Yeah. You know, like they looked like 15, 16 year olds. And, and you know, it's like, even though, like even with Genesis, even though it was Genesis and we were in a, a warehouse that we'd broken into, if I ever saw someone that looked like they shouldn't be there, looked too young, I always used to say, you've got to go, you know? And it, they'd be really surprised. Or even in the beginning, when we had Lee Side Road and we were trying to keep it, you know, we were trying to keep the drug element of it, you know, low and, you know, the other elements of it, you know, on the table. And so if I saw someone just skinning up, because that was the thing, you know, if I saw someone skinning up a joint, just blatantly, you know, I would go up to them and say, hey, mate, what are you doing? You can't do that. And they'd be like, mate, it's an acid party. What are you talking about? But there was elements. We were trying to keep it low. And then, so... Sorry, because I'm just bloody rambling on now. <laughs> so you've done the hypnosis, and so you, you went back into the same venue, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we 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 then tried two magical mystery tours, which both yeah, got yeah, yeah. cancelled. Yeah, yeah. And I think but for, can I just say about the magical mystery tours, though? Yeah, because I think that was quite an important time in the history of how things happened in London. You know, because. You do, Jeremy. Did you go to Spectrum and all those places, Land of Oz, apart from flying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you were yeah, that. You were that. Yeah. Um, but this was those really early days. Like there wasn't a great many people doing warehouse parties in London, and so you yeah. guys, you decided that. No, this you, is eighty. Yeah, this is eighty-eight. Yeah. Um, this is a I'm long like 88, time. Sorry. So yeah. Places like Plink Street and um, um, and and you know parties like Hedonism. Yeah, uh, and then there were, that's what I mean. There's not many people doing it. You know, there's the club scene has kind of initiated. Sunrise it, started. You guys have started. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, okay. You know, okay, so it's a little bit on. Yeah, and you, yeah, you but know. I still think what, but that's still like five organisations. Oh yeah, no, there was you, nothing. You, going. And the biggest party I mean? was like, a thousand people, right? Yeah, exactly. In the exactly. warehouse, they weren't they weren't getting. I mean, I think we had loads more in the Brixton Academy than than, yeah. than I remember any of the warehouse parties around then. So I seem to remember the warehouse parties were, lit, were all usually about 500 to, to maximum 1,000 people, right? Yeah, yeah. What did you have in your early ones? Yeah. It, 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 it Well, yeah, that hundreds to a few hundreds. thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there wasn't that, there wasn't a huge amount, but they, they, but they were the ones that actually really wanted to have it as well, wasn't it? You know, yeah. it was like, they wasn't the ones that would, you know, had read all the newspaper articles. This was all before the newspaper articles. There were no new no, no, newspaper exactly. articles. Exactly. They were ignoring it. Yeah, totally, totally. And it was exactly. only when, you know, some smart, well, I guess it was a political move anyway you know that they decided that they're really going to come down on it but before all of that so you've done the magical mystery tours 
And because yeah, also yeah, In Search yeah. of Space was doing the stuff then. Right that was the time, a magical, that was one of the magical mysteries. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Patrick, Patrick yeah, he yeah. did In Search of Space, yeah. Um, because a lot of people kind of ignore Patrick's contributions to this whole thing as well. I mean, we kind of, we didn't fall out with him, but we kind of said, look, we can't work with you anymore because <laughs> he just kind of took over Genesis, you know. <laughs> and yeah. while we were working, he'd be on the stage, you know, welcoming everybody and thanking <laughs> everyone for coming. You know what he's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know and bless him. So we kind of said, look, mate, we can't have you around this. But he was around at that beginning. He was quite an important part of it as well because the thing is, it like because like what I tell people, you guys are in the trenches and you actually need a bit of balls to do that because you could have easily gone to a club. You know, you put on you put on a suit, go and blag the owner of a club, and, but you decided that you were actually going to go the gritty way, you know, and that yeah. was kicking off warehouse doors, yeah. you know, and a lot of people don't give you that credit, mate, you know, because I know you guys, you know. So how did the where so the warehouse in Hackney then, how did that warehouse come around? Was that the magical mystery tour that got that got closed down? Yeah, there were two. There were two events that got closed down. I think, and what one one was the one on the West Way, and the other was the one in Hackney. Yeah, course. it was in Hackney. Uh, yeah, we, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that, we basically we had a load of people that had had tickets, and we lined up taking a random night, saying, "Look, you've got some tickets." come to the hippodrome on cert a certain <laughs> night of the week uh, and because of me doing the gate crasher balls beforehand uh, peter string fellow would you know, would let me use his venues and i said sure. i've got all these people with tickets you've got an amazing sort of light system there and sound system uh, can can we all can they all come on a thursday night and so all these ravers descend on a thursday night the hippodrome did not know it what was, i think i was there as well mate yeah, yeah. Carnage. It, it, T I think I was there. Thrown out, and it was like, party. <laughs> um, and they were like, "Oh my God, you know what? What are these? Doing? They're, they're not spending any money at the bar, but you know." Uh, uh, anyway, so that dealt with that, and then because we, everyone's drinking water, if that, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and then we thought, right, okay, we're gonna I've literally uh, never seen anything like it. Yeah, yeah, but then we thought, right, let's let's uh, yeah. let, let's reconfigure and work out what we're gonna do going forward. And so we decided to put on a Friday night club night. Um, yeah. Which is that happened, Bliss? Which was Fun City. Fun so City, that, that was it. That started in April, and that was our sort of test bed for the raves. So we would get yeah. DJs in or acts in and, 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 and you know, uh, give them a chance there, see how they were there. And then, sure. and then uh, going forward to May, end of May, Eight but I should just point out about Fun City, Jeremy, you know, is that, um, you know, that was one of the early pivotal clubs as well. I remember Fun City. Where was it? Was it Shaftesbury's or something? Yeah, like yeah it started at Shaftesbury Avenue. And I think yeah. the, the, it, was the first, it was the first, first, first club with a, with a late license. So That's what we, I'm saying. So we, you we, have we, to get that credit as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, and, and you, cause you were organised. You were organised before any of the party promoters. You know, you 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 had the first club. I mean, I'm not talking about the club promoters, your Danny's and stuff like that. I mean, in terms of whereas party promoters, hmm. you guys were in early with that club, and it was a great club. That's the thing about it. Everyone yeah. used to go. It was banged out, as you said. You had all the name DJs, and it was totally focused and centralised around Acid House. So. How long ago, how, how many months did that go on for? And you had a membership club as well, didn't you? Yeah, right. yeah. so I mean, that that started uh -huh. in April 89 and pretty much ran the whole way through that yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, and then over the next couple of years, it moved to Busby's. It, it was a bit at the park in Kensington. Yeah. But that was... That was a long running night. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was good. And at Busby's, it was like a thousand people every Friday. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. it well. I remember but, it well. It was a great night, mate. Good night. Yeah, Top yeah, night. No, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. Did you do Bliss as well? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that was, so. that yeah. was our first club night. So. Okay, Bliss was the yeah. first one then. Yeah. Where was Bliss? Because I came to Bliss. Yeah, I remember it. Okay, because you remember, I remember the flyer. Was it like a phoenix yeah, or something? A beautiful flyer. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful yeah. flyers. And again, that's that was one of the things um, that you your attention to detail because really, really early on. Your flyers were, I would say your flyers were the best out of everyone's on the whole scene because obviously they were unique. I mean, Sunrise, they had some nice flyers, but Sunrise flyers were based on other people's images where you guys are actually having your own flyers designed and, 
you know, so your flies was amazing. So I remember the Bliss fly with that Phoenix, beautiful flies. Which was also UV and laminated, which nobody had gone anywhere near. I mean, which, as, which, as, you know, people like Westworld did really amazing fly designs, die cutting them. Yeah. And, but but actually, the, nobody in the acid house. I mean, actually, the spec the spectrum fly was pretty awesome. Shum fly. Yeah, were but right. they're still different flyers though, because yeah. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Because what I remember about now you're saying it now I, I, I can see it now you've triggered memories um so here you have you've got this flyer right this acid house flyer that lights up under uv i mean come on yeah, yeah. Mate. Yeah, that was a great fly that's a great flyer, mate yeah so so they so it was bliss first and then yeah. fun city yeah. yeah yeah and then you started obviously you were doing started to do so t just tell me when did energy come around so, so energy yeah. came around um, uh, from, you know, from when we started Fun City, was really successful, actually, right from the beginning. I remember. Um, we yeah. started working with, uh, with, with uh, Mark Holmes Hobbs, um, who was a um, graduate of Camberwell College, um, arts college. He basically came out having studied set design. Um, and we started working with Anton, Anton the Pirate. Yeah. Um, help us promote. Um, and so did you come in into it together? What did energy was you, Jeremy and a Anton? Anton was or? living with me. He was a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah um, okay. We okay. bought we bought Anton in to help promote because he was, you know, such a such a face. Yeah, he's uh, a great um, publicist. Yeah. So um so Anton, you know, Jeremy and I were still the, you know, um the backbone, yeah. The the, the, the backbone, the main shareholders in the company, and we bought Anton on um on a on a smaller percentage to, you know, to be sure. a partner. Sure. Um, and and you did some amazing things together. I mean, yeah. Was Westway yeah. your first one? Westway was the first energy. So, oh, um, I mean, Jeremy will probably be able to talk a little bit more about, um, more about the organisation and how it came about. But the concept for energy was really um, it was a groundbreaking uh, event like created that. by you yeah. know by 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 myself, Anton Hobbs. Jeremy. I remember. And just to give people some background, as a creative vision. So so yeah. we really wanted to to create something really, really special because we had this, we had this, you know. Um, Tell us about it. You know, you're in this film studio and yeah. you can basically do what you want because there, there was props, you had loads of props and, yeah, and so, I remember Tintin was like on top of some kind of massive columns, like some Greek Colosseum type yeah. thing. And, yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so obviously Hobbs, Hobbs, Mark Holmes was a, was, was, you know, he was a film set designer. He was already working out of Shepparton, um, working on films. Um, we partied a lot together, really good friends. Um, and, um, you know, we kind of strategized this party with him, um, gave him really, really a lot of creative, um, control and freedom over, over what he wanted to do. Um, he decided he wanted to build this temple. This acid mm, that was it. Yeah, in, that in, was in, it. In the middle of the dance floor, and so so, um, he created essentially a concept of 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 what was on the flyer, ended up being in the main room. Wow! So on the Again, flyer, the flyer had, was absolutely amazing. Kind of Roman Greco temple with kind of like you know, light coming out of you. You've got a futuristic mm. um, cityscape behind, and he pretty much just and the colors, the colors were amazing as well. Recreated that. In a, in a film studio so we, he built he built he did i remember it in the middle he painted all of the sides of the of film studio in this cityscape everything was uv i mean it was wow absolutely incredible for the at the time people walked into that it room. was stunning it was a groundbreaking they, event they just went you know we had you know we had mirror balls in the middle and lasers bouncing on i mean it was it was very very well done I remember uh, Anton was at one point on top of the Col Colosseum <laughs> and it was a huge thing, wasn't it? I mean, if he fell, you know, certain like, you know, you're going to break your neck. But I remember being on top and just dancing, going mad and lasers yeah. hitting him. It was, it was an yeah, amazing so, night. I, 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 as I said to you earlier on, uh, annoyingly, we postponed the first energy by a week because Sunrise were going on the same night. And we took a decision. It's our. It's the first energy. There's no point in going up against sure. Sunrise, who'd already been a, They're uh, well established. Uh, so we postponed it by a week. Only trouble was, I'd already arranged to go to America that week, and I thought, oh, it's fine. I've got these business partners. They they can look after things. Uh, luckily, my 16 year old sister uh, came up from boarding school. Uh, wow. That uh, <laughs> that night. 
and she <laughs> she rang me in America just as she finished counting the money and wow. said, you, you've just thrown the best party ever. And uh, you had, you had, is, and, I say that, and, you know. And, and she then added, it was lucky I was here because... Uh, it was lucky I was here, in, brother. Tintin is, you know, out, out there enjoying the party. Uh, uh, Anton, last time I saw him, he was looking into the laser. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and there's basically no one else... There's no, no one else. It was just the anarchy. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, I've paid all the DJs. I've sorted everything out. Fantastic. And, and <laughs> Good on you, yeah, sis. Yeah. Good well, on you. Yeah. Yeah. I, do, I do remember her being bang on it on the night. Not, not, yeah. not bang on it like I was, but bang yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> because the thing is, there was thousands of people there. You, 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 you created up to that point. This was the, definitely was the best production. We had we had as many people outside as we had inside. Yeah, yeah. In. People I, climbed, I, we were like, always kind of lucky. The walls. What did we have inside? Five thousand. Yeah. Mate, it was it was a, it was an amazing night. I, I had an absolutely fantastic time. I always tell people we were talking about it earlier on. Number one, I think that was the best flyer of the period. Well, you do the best flyers, but that one particular flyer, the Westway Film Studio flyer, I think that's the best flyer of the period. And also that, that that for me, yeah, and yeah. that for me was the best party of the period. You know, and not just the period. That for me was the best party I've ever been. And I, we were talking about it earlier with Jeremy. We were discussing it. And I was saying, well, I think it was all of this combination of all these things happening at once, you know. We're losing all our inhibitions. You know, we're, we were on a, a, a drug that impounded love. And, and just, you know, you couldn't escape feeling that way. You had this whole brand new scene happening around us. You had the new music, the new fashion. Everything was going on. And then at the center of it all, you had these epic events and what you did with uh, the, that particular event is that you showed that you could have a really high quality event, really high quality production, you know, really creative because it, I, I still think it was still probably the best event in terms of production, in terms of creativity, you know? I think, I think for its time, it yeah. uh, still stands out now as being... Still stands it was, out now. It was very, it was, you know, it was completely different to anything that had happened up till then. And it, it was, was really experiential. And, yeah. and actually, the way that Hobbs designed it, it wasn't just like really well produced. It was produced with the Acid House Raver in mind. It was produced to yeah. trip psychedelic experiences it was fun it, it wasn't was. it wasn't heavy psychedelic it was fun it was bright yeah no it was it, it, you could cope with it <laughs> yeah 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 it was, it, it, was, was it was really it was a, it was a, an immersive experience yeah yeah and, and actually, the thing actually, is actually, a lot of people didn't actually do anything similar for that for another 10 years well in, that's what i'm saying dance music production yeah that's what i'm saying no because uh, certainly during the acid house period that two years no one i mean i don't know anyone who's done an event like that but definitely no and that's what i was saying to jeremy earlier is that you know you it's energy and sunrise in terms of organization and production are at the top of the chain but again you both yourselves and sunrise you both approached it in two different complete ways you know and with yourselves you guys are all about detail to sound you know detail to attention flyers i mean obviously sunrise that high production and I'm not knocking Hans because we've all worked with Hans, you know, but I don't think they were as focused on it as what you guys were. And although in later days, you know, they had the sunrise shop and all of this stuff. And I think that I, I, I'll tell you what, let's go back. Cause I was going to talk about being good publicist and Tony flipped into my mind there. But yeah. then I remembered um, Kilroy, Jeremy. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> Was yeah. you on there as well, Tintin? Yeah. Oh yeah, so 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 Kilroy, because I, I was I was speaking about it to I did the podcast with Ian Mill, and uh, he was talking about you guys, and uh, we were talking about it, you know. And so, how did that come about? So Kil Kilroy, for those who who don't know or might not know, is it was the most popular morning chat show on British TV, and this was at a time in in television where. We only had four, was it four channels? Or I think, I don't know if Channel 5 had come out at this point. Oh, no, no, no. Channel 5 was much later. Yeah. So we, we only had four TV channels, folks. <laughs> yeah, totally. And and Kilroy was the most popular chat show host on TV, uh, morning chat show host. And on one show, they had an Acid House show. And then they had 
Jeremy and Tintin and Tony and Jarvis, but tell us a little bit about that because that must have been a bit bizarre. Yeah, yeah so it, we, it, it had uh, Ken Tappenden, the, the yeah, and Kenneth, yeah, as has party squad. He, he, yeah. he, he was on it. Um, Graham Bright was on it, and then you had some other policemen on it, and then you had that's right, Graham Bright was on it, yeah, yeah. You had the, the housewife that didn't like the rays going on in their backyard, so you had <laughs> that's those. right, and you had the old girl because the yeah. way the studio was split up yeah. is that you had half of them were like middle England, yeah, and yeah. then the other then half were these ravers, Graham. and then and at the front were these. You know, evil acid house party promoters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and of course, we had a massive night the night before in the hotel room. Of course. Well, I was <laughs> thinking that because I was thinking, <laughs> okay, Jeremy, we know that Jeremy doesn't indulge, but I was thinking to you, Tintin. We had a lot of champagne, I think, didn't we, Jeremy? Oh, yeah, no, I think. Oh, did you have a bit of a piss? I ended up in the bath with your girlfriend, I seem to remember. Yeah, yeah, I think they were. Okay, you had a bit of a piss up. That's good. That's good. Well, I'll say that's good. <laughs> Pam was with us, no? Uh, yeah, I think that was a different one. I think that, that was, was a, a different one. Yeah, that was a different. Yeah, it was another very similar what show. Was that? Up, that was up in Leeds or somewhere around like that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, actually, I remember that one. Or was it yeah. Manchester or something? I do. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I do remember another one in some type of live studio. Yeah. Was it like Tony Wilson? It might have been, but but that yeah. particular show, the Kilroy chat show. I mean, I mean the Kilroy one. He, he was. <laughs> I mean, Kilroy was great because he, he he just wanted to wind the situation up and yeah and. Because wasn't I, he? Did, wasn't he formerly a Conservative MP, or was or was that come later? Yeah, he was definitely. Uh, he was. Formerly yeah, I think he. I think he was a former Conservative Conservative MP. So he came yeah. with it with that brush. Yeah. You know? But but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so he, he tried to wind the situation up to sort of get us all, all going against each other, which he was always brilliant at doing. Um, sure. And and you know, I I said, look, uh, I'm trying to do these parties legally. I try to get a, a license, but whatever we do we, we get stopped at every level so we land up having to do them illegally and after after the show went out my solicitor rang me up and said you can't do shows like that i'm trying to defend you for the <laughs> party you put on and you're going on live tv and admitting to everything that i'm trying to defend you for so uh you know it, it, it's sort of slightly... and you were suited and booted as well uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're in your, your iconic uniform, you know. Everybody, <laughs> you know, you, you knew. Ah, oh, that's Jeremy. Sorry, it's Jeremy. You know, there, yeah. there's a policeman coming. No, 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 it's Jeremy. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back to the raid. So uh, after after the first one at uh, Westway Film Wow. Studio, yeah. We tried the, the the next one we put on. Because you must have been on a great hype from that. It was yeah, like, yeah, no, wow, no. you've just done the best party in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, so, because there was some. Uh, sorry to keep vent, um, that's right. in, but there were some certain benchmarks, right? And like what you said, like the hedonism warehouse party, you know, it was a benchmark, you know. Mm -hmm. And so the event that you've just done, you know, you've just set another benchmark. So that night, it must be like, wow, you know. Yeah, and no, it felt pretty amazing. Afterwards. Yeah. For a long yeah, time dude. That, yeah. I mean, even now when I think about it, it kind of gives me goosebumps. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It gives me goosebumps just remembering being there. But yeah, go on, Jeremy. So then the next step is so, like, right, because so Jeremy's yeah. all business, isn't he? Jeremy's like, right, next one. <laughs> yeah, we, we found uh, we found a venue further down the M4, you know, big big uh, disused warehouse, and um, Hobbs had gone and built this amazing. He built like a third size uh, third the size of the of, of stonehenge he built wow. in this warehouse wow uh, and we're so all we're ready, to all ready to go. Sure. And, and and basically it got it got raided before we could get going so, which is always a nightmare uh yeah yeah so so uh that that one didn't happen you're here yeah yeah we still hear you oh no no not you sorry oh yeah yeah <laughs> So, so that that one didn't happen. So we then uh, went two weeks later uh, at Heston Service Station, uh, which yeah. was uh, an incredible event. It, it yeah. now the, the the warehouse that we did it in is now the Boeing Spare Parts Warehouse. Wow! Um, and I I've been back there since because I did an interview out, outside it, and they cool. were a bit funny about me outside, but. That yeah, that's happened to me. Because <laughs> the the um, it, it, basically we've got a hundred people in the venue with the people sort of just finishing it off, the, getting the sound system ready, and the police turn up, 
and they go, oh, what are you doing? And uh, I've got like a little video camera. Oh, we're filming a documentary and you know, came up with all this Good rubbish. Um, that was the classic. And, and, and they went away and think, oh, I think we got away with that. And then suddenly you start to see police cars arrive. So, uh, and they blocked the exit from the M4 and all these wow. cars were going, actually stuff that, we'll just park on the, uh, on the hard shoulder of the M4 and, uh, and, and jump over. I remember over. this. And, and literally the whole, yeah, and it delayed flights to Heathrow and well, all they yeah. Heathrow. But wasn't that the one, yeah, <laughs> where they, um, they, they had all those tow trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think there was, totally there was one of them. Them. There was one of them where they made someone do that. It was like, it was you guys or it was Sunrise, but they, and they made everyone park on the thing. And then there was an announcement saying, oh, you know, there's loads of tow trucks out there. And there was about 30 tow trucks. You know, all those local dudes and their little tow yeah, trucks. Yeah, yeah. These, <laughs> you know, they were just towing cars away, just towing them away. Of off course. The well, well, people were just parking on the hard shoulder of the M4. Yeah. I remember the hard shoulder, hard shoulder on the other side as well and running across the M4. So oh, we closed no, the M4. We yeah, closed yeah. Heathrow Airport. You closed um, Heathrow Airport? Yeah, because this was right by the junction. Wow, dude. Um, and, and because the police, they closed, they closed all of the approach roads. And so sure. people would just park up wherever they could and run. So there were yeah. people running across the M4, clambering over the estate in front of it to get in. Yeah, not a good look. Police, police, um, you know, it was a bit of a siege inside after, you know, you know, because we released it on the phone lines as soon as we knew that we'd been, you know, being compromised. It was out on the phone lines. Um, and then people just, just, you know, we called all the ticket agents send everyone sure. down now bring the convoys um yeah and um yeah that was carnage and the police have basically surrounded there was a perimeter fence in heston around the edge of the warehouse and the police had essentially surrounded that and people were making breaks for the <laughs> fence it was like rather than trying to trying to escape from from somewhere people were trying to um, break in yeah <laughs> so for sure i've done it myself <laughs> Police were saying <laughs> police were setting dogs on them and everything. I mean, it was really mad. Yeah, I've done it myself. And actually, and actually inside the party, uh, at one point, um, a little bit earlier on in the party, before it got completely packed, um, we thought that the police were going to come in. They put their sure. they put their riot gear in. We were like, oh, they're coming in, they're coming in. And uh, who who was emceeing? So whoever was emceeing, like, got everybody into the middle of the into the middle of the warehouse. Wow! In preparation for this kind of conflict, and it was all quite intense. Wow! Um, and then they decided that they weren't going to do it, and off went the party. And um, I and, actually, that, and that's I the thing. Left in the boot of my car. Excellent. Um, <laughs> being driven in the boot uh, out in Excellent. the boot of my car at whatever time it was, lunchtime the next day. Yeah, that's happened to me as well, dude. Out, <laughs> having to be driven out in the boot of the car. That's, Mate, you don't get them stories anywhere. But um, and, and, and then so, actually from that party, well, yeah, two yeah. things happened. One, yeah, you know, we thought, oh great, we made a bit of money, and of course the and reputation we, we'd employed realised how much money we're making. So suddenly here's their the other thing went up. So they 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 took a little bit of extra tax off us. Um, yeah, and then <laughs> to put uh, it polite, so they worked longer than they expected. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, you know, because normally it's like, you know, they only do two or three. It hours, was actually, but... it was. I mean, you know, to be fair to them, they they essentially kept the party going. I mean, oh, yeah, no, you, know, it's, you, it's, you it's were only... essentially paying. You were paying the yeah. security, not not to, um, you know, you, they 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 were responsible for essentially helping you make sure the party happened. And they well, were very, they not were very, for us. They were, they were very not good for at us. It. They were, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were only responsible for making sure we didn't get robbed. And that's it. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like no, right. your only reason the, you're the here. Week, the following week, <laughs> cancel party is the same as getting robbed. Yeah, yeah. yeah no so, money for the security. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the following week, um, I get a knock at the door from from the police, and uh, but a really nice policeman. He goes, "Oh, hi, hi, Jeremy." I'm, I'm, you wouldn't mind just coming down to, to answer a few questions uh, uh and yeah he's in very nice and I, i've always tried to have a you know a, 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 a civil relationship yeah, yeah. With them. and i'll say yeah yeah no problem so and they put me into the back of a and me a section de chevaux yeah so in the back of the uh, section de chevaux which is their undercover police car <laughs> with a smiley face sticker on the back with, with, with their, no way two really friendly policemen who then drive me around to like clapham police station but they can't get the recording equipment to work there and then then to bassey police station all these different police stations and they just interview me and i just was really honest with them say look you know we're sure. just trying to do 
parties legally and we, we try and you know make it as safe as possible and all the rest of it which and, is all true as well yeah, yeah and and at the end of it they go oh, well, thank you very much and that was it and then months later uh, i'm driving off to someone else's uh warehouse party and um and i bump into them they're like, oh hi jeremy are you off to this party yeah we're trying to find out where it is too and, <laughs> and that was the sort of she was nice wearing dungarees, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah but that oh, was just no. a nice face. Yeah, yeah, the... she was wearing dungarees, and in the 2CV, there was a smiley face sticker in the back. I mean, you literally couldn't make it up. Yeah. No way, it, was, it was brilliant. But the police were always very respectful to us, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I suppose thought... you get what you give out, really, because you guys were really respectful to them as well. And I mean, I guess, I guess most of the policemen, given that they have more problems with a pub with 100 people in it, than they do with a party with 10,000 in it. They were, cause you know, remember in the beginning, they were like happy to let it go on. You know, they come, they check your health and safety. They want to know, do you have fire exits? Do you have illuminated fire exit signs? You know, have you got a yeah. few fire yeah. extinguishers, you know? I mean, there was never, there was never any aggro until we did a party at the academy and- Yeah, you know, and the gangsterism. Well, the thing is- 90 and, you know, somebody got stabbed in one of our parties, but it wasn't until like 1990 that that happened. Yeah, and, and it had changed. Good. Everything had changed. The music had changed. You know, the, course, you know the drugs also, had changed. We're, we're also in, in a, you know, in a licensed venue in Brixton. Sure. You know, but, the, but the thing is though, and, and again, you know, 1990, that's all after all, because you remember once all that press came out, especially for you guys as well, because obviously you and Energy and Sunrise were at the top of that chain. When the newspapers were saying that you're raking in half a million quid a party, I mean, you're just attracted all of the wrong people, aren't you? And then suddenly you're presented you with, that's what I'm saying. And suddenly you're presented with all these different gangs and you don't know which gang do I go with, who's the baddest or how do they work this out? But I know that you had some of those uh yeah. isms as well didn't you yeah i mean the, the 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 sort of start of it was when uh it was august it's just coming up to the uh, effingham energy summer festival and that's at the height of things yeah. 1989 yeah. you know and and uh and there's a knock at the door uh at, at your office or yeah, at the venue at, yeah. at my office yeah. uh, and these two guys come in and they've got They've got big long coats on, and it's August, uh, and they're definitely tooled up underneath. Sure. And I've got one of our ticket sales guys from uh, East London is there. Um, so he's and, got bags of cash with him. Uh, well, no, he, okay. he, he, he didn't just had then, tickets. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> and I think the whole thing was a setup. He he was there, uh, right. and they push him about a bit and go, right, who's doing the party? And I said, it's me. He says, well. Uh, if you want it to happen, you need to sort us out. Um, otherwise, it's not happening. Okay. Um, and off they go. And and uh, the East London ticket sales guy goes, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I think, I, I think uh, yeah, uh, I think I'd know someone who might be able to sort it out for you. Uh, so, and, uh, Classic. Driving, driving down to East London. So it was my, an East Ender. Yeah, uh, on, on my own. Uh, well, Sam. Picking this guy up uh, uh, as I got to the East End, driving to some pub, and it was like a scene from a from the sort of craze movie. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. These, these two old boys are there with their uh, pints of bitter and their slippers on, but they're sort of old school gangsters. Totally. And and they go, uh, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We think we think we know who it might be. Yeah. It's, it's going to get a bit messy, but we we can get it sorted out. It's going to cost it'll cost you thirty grand. I'm thinking, Up front. I'm thinking well, I I don't even know whether I'll make that from the party, whether it will happen, or you know, you just it was that totally. time yeah, where yeah. you would make a load on one party and lose it on the next, and all the rest of it. And, yeah. And and, that, and you lose it on the next because the yeah. police are out to stop the parties, yeah. so the police would get to the parties, and you know. So but sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't feel I could just sort of say no, no, that's far too much money, no way. Uh, and so I sort of make up some excuse. Of, oh well, uh, let, let me have a think about it. I'll have to check with my business partner. <laughs> he goes, well, you've got a phone there. Ring him. It's oh, uh, he's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's anyway, on top. Yeah. Phone you know, him like, now. <laughs> it's so kind of you. So that sounds like a wonderful deal. But I'll have to get back to you. And so I got out of there. I thought, yeah, you know, uh, and, and basically just just left it. And months later, I got a call going uh yeah we're still waiting for the money 
We went into the oh, Now you owe them 30 it, grand. It got a bit messy, uh, but we are still waiting for the money. I was like, oh, right, okay, and just put the phone down. And that, <laughs> it was all, they, they just saw, you know. Yeah, an opportunity. A couple of, uh, you know, kids. But you did end like up upgrading. Targets, I tell you, easy targets. Yeah, but they were wrong because, I mean, you guys, you did upgrade your security, didn't you? Well, didn't you did you have well, SAS guys as, at one as point? As soon as that happened, I yeah. found out a, a, a friend of my father's um and he said right i've sorted out a meeting for you i went up to uh pal mal to the sas uh, wow. headquarters wow um, and had a meeting they sent a team down they were like right put grills on those windows put this here put that there um and he he here's your 24-hour security guard and they gave me this guy called tack who is uh, uh, not just a legend in the sas there was an article in the papers the other a few years ago. The top 100 wow. uh, sort of uh, people from mm. the army over the last hundred years, and he's wow. one of them. Uh, he 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 was in some amazing battles of wow. like, serious bravery, uh, and and someone and he was that, your bodyguard. What what happens if someone you know comes at you with a with a gun or something? He goes. Oh, I've got the machine gun in the in the boot of the car. <laughs> it was literally, you know, <laughs> and he means it. <laughs> he was there 24 hours a day. Grenades on me. <laughs> um, and then don't worry, son. They I've were got very cool as well. These guys. They yeah, were yeah. Really, cool they were really, really good company. They weren't. It wasn't like having. They were fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they were and, fun. and then with with the actual raves, we'd have our sort of street security who knew how how the form worked with. Of course, the street guys. Um, which was really important. Yeah. But to make sure they didn't suddenly turn on you. Because they're the ones who turn on everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we then had our own SAS security who would look after us. Look, and after and the basically, money. Basically, mm. from that point, the sort of problems went away. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of I'm not surprised. Well yeah. But I don't know if you want to talk about or mention there, because I remember one, because that was the thing. I just want to explain to people about when parties, they did get cancelled because you know at this point most of the parties were illegal and illegal meant that you had no license and that's all it really meant you know because some of the guys like you guys you would be in legal venues you know like you'd pay an owner to be in a venue but most of the time it meant illegal so well we'd the, also we'd also um make sure that we had a directory of everybody that was supposed to be coming into the thing uh, uh, into yeah. the party because actually it was pretty gray area licensing back then so we would totally uh, basically we would have a mailing list um and yeah. list everybody that bought a ticket and we would yeah. say that they were which made it a private the, club of the, the karma club which was our you know karma productions with the name of the company and uh, everybody was a signed up member and yeah. you could really technically legally have a private party for members without requiring a license yeah and, that, and i mean and that's what that's that, how we did that too yeah. <laughs> and actually we we ran our we ran the premise of running our events and we would have a qc on site uh, and when we did Effingham and the police came in and, and uh, tried to shut us down, we had a QC engage them and demand, that, and demand that they wake up the judge at midnight Excellent. to get a ruling on this because actually legally we were within our rights. And the amount of time that that Queen's Councillor on site bought us, we were able to get 10,000 people into the venue and it, and it went off. So Then it was too late to stop. But yeah. how could we that? Because cause you, you've gone from... You know, because obviously the, the parties got more successful. There was a bigger weight coming down from government and from law enforcement. There's weights coming down from security teams who now want all your money because they think you're earning hundreds of thousands of pounds a party. Yeah. So so the heat is really on in every 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 direction you turn. And in amongst that, you still have to produce your parties. Mm. Yeah. You know? And A, it's, it's getting more and more difficult to find a venue. It's more and more difficult to find a yeah. venue, yeah. and so then you have to hit the road, yeah. and then you and then you meet all these different types of characters that have got venues and yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, there was one time I I went on this sort of tour looking at venues, and I went up to one in Suffolk, and uh, that the owner was like, absolutely no way, you, you, you're not using this venue, uh, and then a few months later the Dance 89, which was the, the, the energy we did at the end of uh, of, of September, which was know, a huge party. Yeah, uh, which we we'd found a venue in Surrey. We're yeah. getting getting it all set up. Police helicopters 
descend, they basically t tell everyone, look, uh, we will arrest you, we see you again. Um, we get told that the, the, the party's you know, been raided and we s s tell all the lorries you know, with the sound system and the generators and uh, you know, all the other production stuff, sure. just to get onto the M25, just keep going around in circles. Or park Excellent. Up <laughs> until you just so people know, I mean, you're not talking about a few guys in vans. No, You're no, talking about full train. productions, articulated trucks, and these and guys are just driving around the motorway, yeah. just waiting for a phone call. And, well, yeah, and we've we... sold 20,000 tickets, and I'm in my car. Uh, I think Tintin was in the office, sort of keeping things going there, you yeah, know, just keeping the phone lines up sure. to date. Say, look, you know, uh, it, yeah, it, yeah, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's happening, but we can't release the venue yet. And I'm literally driving around the M25. I'm ringing people up, saying, "Do you know?" It? And we're literally using all of our contacts to try and find a venue. Yeah. We know that all these people have, have bought tickets. They're desperate to go raving. Yeah, all the, you know, all the DJs are booked, the acts are booked, all that sort of stuff. It's insane. Yeah. And, and then, like a, yeah, then at one, one o'clock, one o'clock in the in the middle of the night, one o'clock, I get the call saying, "Yeah, we've got a venue in Suffolk." Yeah. Um, and we dispatch the whole team up there and the, the first people that get there um, and they're, they're ahead of the sound system, they get there and, and one, one of them goes, oh, uh, I've just seen a police car driving around and said, look, what, whatever it takes, just make sure they do not uh, find Stop this for uh, sure. You have to go and break his aerial on the back of his car so he can't communicate, whatever, <laughs> to make sure, uh, anyway. Um, and it was still quite innocent, although you yeah, made yeah, these yeah, suggestions, yeah. it was still innocent. It wasn't no, you know, yeah. it wasn't out of yeah, anger. It was like, yeah, it stop them, you know, block them, yeah. set, lie down in front of the vehicle, do whatever you have to. Yeah, yeah. so the, everyone gets to the venue at about six in the morning, so it's Sunday mm, morning. I remember, I was there. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I refused to leave London until I'd heard the first yeah, record. It's, it's yeah, 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 it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not The trouble was the, the generator got stuck in the traffic behind the ravers so they couldn't they couldn't start until the generator got through anyway it got yeah. through and it, and it went off and actually i was i was Can showing you, my two I'll daughters tell you, video yeah, course, yeah. and and there's I, I i went forward to near the end of the video uh because it's quite a long one and there's these three cars burning and yeah that's right i remember and, yeah and i think it was just just probably someone threw a cigarette somewhere yeah. until it set light. So you dry glass grass. There's no yeah. panic. But everyone's still sort of raving with they these were, I cars. remember. They, they were just the moving their cars over. And, yeah, and then the, and then the, and then yeah. the fire engines driving through as well. Then the fire yeah. engines. It, uh, yeah. You know, but I tell you about that party. Yeah. So we're in there, and so obviously it's it's light, so you can see everything, right? Yeah. So the party's going off. You know, and a load of people climbed up on on those those roofs. They had some temporary structures in there. No, that, 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 was was sound system. System. that was the sound system. That was the sound system. On no, sound over system in the corner. The yeah, no, no, not where the lorries were. This was oh. like, this this was oh, some yeah, kind yeah. of structure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was over yeah, in the yeah. corner. Yeah, sort of behind the stage. Yeah. Well, no, because the stage was kind of back there, and yeah, then you right. had back at the other end of the warehouse. And the reason yeah. I remember it so well is there was a load of people. They climbed up on it, and it wasn't very secure. So I went over and I said, because you remember, even when we were at one of other parties. You still kind of had your promoter hat on yeah. and it's like if that comes down it's over for all of us isn't it yeah. you know? so i went over and i told everyone to get down off of the roof that was all fine they all got down it was fine and about 20 minutes later i was standing i'm dancing away you know whatever and then this two really this couple came up to me really straight looking couple in fact farmer like looking couple a man and a woman they came straight up to me and remembering there was thousands of people there you know, they came right up to me and they said, this is your party. I said, no. I said, this isn't my party. He said, yes, it is. Someone over there has told us this is your party. And I said, and I said well, it's not my party, you know. And so they went off. But when the story came out, because it was all in the papers the next day, wasn't it? Yeah. So or, or on the Monday or, you know. But when the stories came out, they had a picture of the owners and it was that man and woman. It was, <laughs> it was them. You know, I was like, oh no, they came up to me. You know, yeah, yeah. that was a that, great party, man. That was a great. Even though it was, it started all, it at seven, was also it was great. It was also, I think, um, I might be wrong, but I think that was the last big illegal party. 
Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. And, and you yeah. know, the idea of, you know, these cars burning and the absolute chaos oh. and just, you know, how difficult it was. It really... How difficult it was to get off and then how big it was when it happened. And sure it was way. like, we, we went from like Westway Film Studios, where it was the most amazing production in the world, to managing to get two 40 foot low loader sound systems. And that was all that was there. Quite just sad. two massive Quite right sad. and left sound systems. Quite sad. <laughs> and it's kind of, we've gone full circle within six yeah. months. Yeah, what, 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 and, you know, didn't need but didn't need lights now. <laughs> no, well, it started at six a.m. So. Yeah, but what what was amazing about that party is, you know, I think Smiley Culture was meant to be sorting out all the music and acts and everything, and he he he, he was pretty useless. But sure, we still had this long list of DJs and acts and everything that was meant to be playing, um, and. Obviously, half of them couldn't make it because you know the venue. Well, was six there. in the morning as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still. Yeah, a lot of top DJs still went to it and played. Of course, they want to be there. But, but there wasn't a single complaint of people going, well, I've paid £20 for my ticket and you yeah. said that so-and-so was going to play. Honestly, I don't think the line was People, people, people no, never cared. They just wanted didn't. to be part mm. of something amazing. But it, it, wasn't was, about, yeah. it wasn't about the lineup. No, no, ever. no one cared. Ever. No one it even was knew. never about the lineup. And you, if you remember rightly, it, it, this is way before the super DJ thing. It was like no one cared. No one, because we, we had no MCs at our parties either. So the reality is, unless you know what that DJ looks like, mm. you wouldn't know what DJ is playing anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah. And in those days, you know, before social media, before the internet, you know, before camera phones, you, no one knew, unless you was industry, you, you didn't really know what all these insiders looked like, you know? Uh, no um, one knew what you guys looked like, you know? So which is in contrast to now with social media and all that stuff. But and, and with the music as well, yeah. actually most of the DJs were all playing the same records because yeah. just, there weren't, there wasn't a huge amount of music. I mean, there wasn't sure. a lot of music being released, but essentially, you know, you'd hear, you'd hear the same records. The same songs. And four it was triggers, times, wasn't it, as well? It's it, triggers. You know, you know, you know, yeah. four times and like, there's some DJs that were beginning to develop their own sound back then, yeah. but actually they hadn't really. It, it, yeah, it was new. It was new. It was new and... And it was all about the music. It wasn't about mixing. It wasn't about the DJ. No one cared, you know, like a lot of our first parties, all it said was top DJs. It, we didn't even name DJs. You know, that's something that came a lot later as the, as the industry changed. And as, as everyone went back into the clubs, that's when that super DJ kind of emerged out of that, wasn't it? I mean, obviously the music was vital. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Without that, and, and, yeah. and the people that were religiously playing at our parties and everywhere, people like Fabio and Group Rider, all the top know, boys. Yeah. You know, the top boys. You know, they they were delivering amazing music. For sure. Um, for sure. But, and I'm going to get them on the, the podcast. general public. Yeah. Didn't really. The people on the inside knew. Yeah, you know, we all we were knew. All hanging out, right? We're all hanging yeah. out with Fabio and this lot, and we're having a great time. But majority of the punters didn't know. Who, didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know, and that's why it didn't really matter. You know, it's like if you see like. You know, when, if Paul, when, when Paul Oakenfold plays out, for example, now, yeah, you just see it's just a sea of cameras, just camera lights, just filming him. It's just insane, you know? There'd be like three, four hundred people just filming him. No one's dancing. You know, they're just standing there, just like, wow, you know? you got to wonder how it feels, you know? It's like, wow. And, and the contrast between Spectrum, you know, <laughs> Land yeah, of no, Oz, no. to like, now of all these camera phones in your face you know well, where possible we always tried to have the production in the middle of the dance floor yeah not at the front of it yeah so with the first energy party we put the we put the 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 the, the, the um temple in the middle of the dance floor with sure um, with, i with remember the, and that encourages um, people to be all around it, academy it? Stuff, all of the all of the production was over your head in the middle of the dance floor we very rarely put everything on stage anytime when we really did stage focused stuff was when we were doing live shows like 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 the live dance concept that we did at that, that we did at um uh, at the Docklands. But even then actually sure. most, most of the production was hanging above above the dance floor. Sure. No. And and it seemed as if you had spent that money on um the the DJs, the lineup that you had there. Because I at the um the Docklands arena. Oh yeah, it was ridiculous. We had like Snap and Black Box yeah. and State and <laughs> Yeah no, I mean, it actually it was that, that was pretty ahead of its time that party. Um, it was, and it, it was. I mean, it wasn't very successful as a party, no. but as a, no. as a, you know, as well, a, you tried. I mean, as a foretaste of we, we tried to do something that was legal, something during the day, day, something that was live focused. Yeah. Um, and we put, you know, 
a lot of them were very cheesy when I look back at it now. But I mean, it was. No, but you were trying. Jeremy and I we were discussing it earlier. And that move into the Docklands arena, I mean, that was a big move in terms of legalization and legalizing party promoters and dance parties. And so, I mean, you know, I got arrested at that party. Oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> quite, a few, that quite a few people did. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but. Um, but I still understood what you were trying to do. And obviously this, it was a brand new venue in London. It was the biggest venue in London as well, wasn't it at the time, Docklands Arena. It was owned by Frank Warren, who was a, who's a famous boxing promoter. Yeah. And, and so I, I didn't blame you for doing that, but I, I guess once you understood what it involved, yeah. once you saw you know, like mental. days later when you heard about all the police that were there and yeah. you know yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and just mate. the cost to put it on as well i mean it yeah was, yeah because obviously you would have had to pay that police bill too wouldn't you hey we buy even if it was it. unconsciously even if you didn't know it i well, mean that... you know, back back then you didn't have to pay the police oh, okay. bill. I mean, oh, okay. it was just before and right. i think it was uh it was the next it's sort of fantasia and those rays that started <laughs> right getting the police bill yeah. But I think James Perkins from Fantasia, he was so pissed off about getting a 20 grand police bill, he paid it in one penny pieces and made them count it all. <laughs> classic, classic, excellent, excellent. And so, you know, one of the things that people always ask me about is they always ask me about the secrecy of it all, you know? And you guys were one of the people that first started using the phone the phone lines and the, the premium phone lines because it, they wasn't even a thing back then, was it? You know, it's like no one was using those premium phone lines for anything else. It became popular and we started seeing them in the newspapers. But people were using them for chat. Yeah. So people were using them for chat. Chat back in, you know, back in, there's a, you know, 1988, you know, you could call these things and you could chat with other people and pay like a pound a minute or whatever you were paying, right? Sure. Um, they weren't used so much for information and it was really, it was tony colson hater that had the you know the he was the first guy yeah his yeah. idea of basically putting his putting his venues um behind these phone lines and he probably made more money out of those than he did actually out yeah of, out and of, we like, throwing the parties well you know it was a good move because we wanted obviously we all wanted those numbers because you know it was a, that we were using meeting points and i remember we used them for one party and you know david kind of called them up and said mate you better stop that <laughs> so that was the end of our deal we ended the, up using the phone their line. phone lines didn't we jeremy <laughs> yeah 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 we, we 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 had a deal with with sunrise that we, we would rent their oh, phone that's lines. how they did it yeah rent that's them. how they did it yeah yeah because i remember on the day, them. <laughs> yeah 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 that's what i mean because on the day we it was a we were um, biking we just by courier he would have the details. We didn't even have a phone number that we could call. We literally had to bike the details over to them and then they would put it on the line. But um, just, just for some people who might, who might not know what we're talking about, what we're talking about is the different stages of Acid House was in, in the beginning there was meeting points and as the parties grew and they got bigger, their meeting points became a bit of a, a disaster for the party promoters because a lot of the time the meeting points would be close to where the venue was. So once the police found out where the venue, where the meeting point was, you know, they would do like a search within 10, 20 miles of that meeting point. And a lot of the time they will end up finding your warehouse. So the next leap from that was using these premiership phone lines and you print in that on your ticket. And then what happened is at a certain time, people phoned this number and then this number gave them the address of where the party is. Um, but talking about tickets, yeah, there was one thing that we did take got from you guys. And that was the tickets that you used to print with your man um, in St. Albans, Falconer Press. Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember him, um, the Falconer Press ago, guy. Yeah, 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 because basically, because the thing was, uh, so as these parties got massive, we had lots of problems with forgeries, didn't we? You remember? Yeah. All these different firms, they were forging tickets. Um, and so what you guys did, you was using Falcon and Press. And Falcon and Press, his name was Nigel. And he had this small little hut thing in St. Albans. But when you go in the hut, and it was literally this small little hut, when you go in there, he would have all these tickets hanging, you know, hanging everywhere, drying and things like that. But it would have been Michael Jackson tickets. You know, it was always major artists, you know, it was always like Michael Jackson and those level of people. 
And what he had at Falcon and Press was he had, he was the only person in the world to have the, wa the watermarks that he had. Yeah. yeah, and it was the coloring as well. And um, we, one day we saw one of your tickets and we were like, oh, we, this is the one, you know? So we went, we contacted him and then he started making our tickets. And, and the thing with the forgery is, is no one could get that color of ink either, could they, you know? And obviously no one could get that paper. Yeah. yeah. So that was one of the things that we took from you guys, you know? We had, you know, same tickets on the same level as Michael Jackson. <laughs> and do you remember, as the years went on, yeah? We're now thinking about it. When I say as the years went on, this was in the space of like three, four years. He actually improved because he got to that point where he was actually embedding watermarks or whatever you wanted. You can do your name in there that you could see under UV. Do you remember when he started doing that? Yeah, and no, we had, we had UV embossed tickets, yeah. Yeah, so there was UV embossed tickets, you know. So And it was Nigel. I bet it was Nigel because you yeah, did use him a lot, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, You're yeah, a better, so that, better memory than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I just, you know, it's just, it's just something that stood out. So one of the other things that stand out, right, is was, wasn't you guys, remember when this whole freedom to party thing happened? And wasn't you guys always, you, Jeremy, wasn't you part of the, what was it, the ADDRP, the, the Association of Dance Party Promoters? Uh, yeah, I think we all sort of signed yeah, up. Yeah, 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 we all tried it, didn't we? I mean, yeah, yeah, so old Stainsy, he, he kind of yeah. pulled the wall over our eyes on that one, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um... I mean that was a I mean that was a good party as well though. I mean forgetting about the march, the march, the the demonstration at Trafalgar Square because you was there, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. obviously, do you remember that night? We, you know, we we ended up breaking into that venue. It was not wasn't us uh, yeah. personally, but I think it was uh, Tarquin. Was it Tarquin that got the building that night? I can't I can't remember. I think it was Tarquin yeah, that got the. So I remember. When we got the call, yeah, <laughs> but you remember Keith, you know, my partner Keith, yeah? Yeah. We were breaking into this building, you know, in, in, on this industrial estate on, in the East End, you know? And we, we, we literally, we've just kicked out this window <laughs> and we're literally just climbing through and the phone rings, you know, and it's Tony and he says, oh, we've got a venue now. And it was Slough, or not Slough, but it was, it was somewhere like that. Do you remember? It was quite far away. Yeah. And um, so we got that call. You know, so we kind of left everything. It was just like, okay. And we rushed down there. And I remember as soon as we got to the venue, I remember um, Tarquin coming up to us. Do you remember Tarquin? Yeah. 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 No. yeah Weekend World. I remember he came up to me and said, um, you know, have you got 500 quid? Because uh, the pikey that owns the fairground rise, he's just pulled a shotgun out on me. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and said, I ain't cook because he had the, the, the he had a load of um hot dog stands and food stands in there in the building. Right. You remember? And uh so that was quite funny, you know. And so we had to pull up pull up the money for him. I might be getting the, the venues mixed up actually. But the freedom to party thing, I mean, do you remember at that time we all felt quite positive about it, didn't we? Yeah, we felt yeah. like no, this is something that can actually happen and can actually work because you remember, part of our thing was that we didn't have a platform to enable to show people that we wasn't all these evil acid house barons that the newspapers were making us out to be, because you know the the newspapers had demonised us to such to lo such low extremes in in terms of. You know, when they were saying that, you know, they're selling drugs to underage kids and all of this stuff, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really wasn't doing the scene any good at all, you know. So yeah. to happen to, so to watch the scene grow into what it did into such a small amount of time, but the part of it, the, the, the small little cog parts of it, which was the ADR, AD, D, A double D, PR, <laughs> the, the Association of Dance Party Promoters. Um, with that, we actually felt it could do something. We actually felt it could help. And part of me still thinks that it might have helped. But what it did highlight is it highlighted um, later club licensing. And so I think it done a huge amount for that. But I think that by the time all of that came around, you know, your energies, your sunrises, your genesis, there was just no way we were going to get licenses. No. <laughs> They're yeah, like, I'm no. Thinking, well, we, we, we set it up for the likes of Fantasia yeah. and... Uh, for everyone other. that came after. Yeah. 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 yeah and, they, and the festival... They for... had a clean slate, whereas if any of us went to try and get a license, they'd yeah. just say, oh, yeah, but you did that illegal party. Totally. 
criminal record for this. And even in the venues, you know, they would go and scare the owners, you know, so the owners would call you up and say, no, I can't do the event. I mean, they really knuckled down on us. But when you look back at it, lads. We, yeah. I mean, we did end up doing seven or was it nine parties at the at the academy? So actually, yeah, yeah we did one a month. But uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly yeah. I think we we did one a month through both nineteen ninety, well, no, eighty nine into 90. end of eighty nine. We did eighty nine New Year's Eve, ninety into ninety one, nice. uh, and then yeah, and then we did a number of parties nineteen ninety one. So we did adapt. Um, and and what happened? Because something happened, didn't it? But between ninety ninety one, did so, was it, did someone yeah, come got, in? We got we got we got involved with um, yeah with, that North with, London with, that that uh, Northern firm was it? Yeah, yeah and then they kind of then he kind of snatched it, did he? They kind of took it, did he? Well, we just gave up on it. We just yeah, you gave up on it because at that point we just, point, we just can't we can't we can't work. With gangsters, basically, can't work with gangsters, but not only that, the scene had kind of died anyway. Scene had died. Yeah. We'd all lost. We'd all lost. Yeah. I mean, like you know. And so what we're talking people about people beginning is, to get killed as well. Yeah, because um, and and, and because and they were very messy. Yeah. yeah. Well, they wasn't. Sorry, I'll, I'll take that back. They wasn't getting killed. But the fact is that the people that we're talking about, they were robbing banks for ten thousand pounds, you know, and post offices for ten thousand pounds. So when they look at the likes of you guys, they look at the likes of us. You know, running around with flowers in our hands, saying we love everybody, drinking water. You know, we 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 come across as easy targets. Well, you know? we we got introduced to these guys through a very good friend of mine who I, you know, um, who I'd known for you know since I was sixteen. Um, and actually, this firm was attached to this guy's family, um, who lived up north. So it kind of it came in a little bit unexpectedly. Actually, it wasn't sure. It wasn't, it wasn't that we needed protection or we, it was actually. No more of an investment we needed money to go and do some of these things they had connections up north we didn't quite understand exactly what we were getting ourselves into until we were into it too deep and it's it's because it came from a a, a point of it was a friend yeah 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 it yeah, caught your guard. Threatening at the time. Yeah, and it just turned out, you know, you know, the deeper we got on with these guys, the more. Oh, they were scary. Right. Yeah. Well, they weren't. And, 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 and it's, I mean, well, it wasn't they, they scary. Were scary, but they were yeah. just really annoying. <laughs> and you know, they'd do things like, you know, nobody would get paid. We'd do a party, and they wouldn't, pay, we wouldn't want to pay anyone. Yeah, not Which good. Which just like when you're when you're doing that, and you just, you know, then the vibe's gone. Everything's stressful. Everything, you know, and we were just like, you know what? Give us some money. Take the brand off our hands. Yeah. Because it's not like you can force them, they, is it? They as did well, one party, and, they, and, then, and then, and then, you know, one of them ended up getting killed um, yeah. over, over a book of tickets that that somebody had um, stolen at one of our parties. Yeah, uh, yeah. Came back that's to bite the thing. Him two, he, he beat the guy up, but came back to bite him two years later. The guy shot him. Well, that's the thing. You, you know, you. you know, I think I think two or three people died over one yeah. book of tickets. Yeah, and the thing is, the the people <laughs> I mean, that died, they they wasn't necessarily people like us. They were no, they, they were no. bullies, you know. They were bullies, yeah. you know. Um, not to speak ill of the dead, but yeah. And so so at that point, because I remember, because then it changed, didn't it? Because then they started doing lots of because because the yours was originally Karma Productions, wasn't it? And then what what did they call it? Then they called it like Karma Sutra or something, didn't they? <laughs> so they it's tried, funny. do you remember? And they, it's they, all, they it's mimicked. All, it's all a little bit fuzzy. I mean, when I look yeah, back. Yeah, because when lot. you look at some of the flyers nowadays, you can actually tell which flyers were them. Yeah, well, they yeah. all they did, they, they, they copied them. They mimicked them. yours, yeah, yeah. They copied, they just copied them and printed them in a different... In yeah, a, they, co- they copied them and they printed or, them. Or but whatever. they called themselves, rather than call themselves Karma Productions, they called themselves like Karma Sutra. Yeah. So I mean, all they, of, didn't, they, they yeah. only they only did that. I mean, I think they were doing it for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would have seen it died. It had changed anyway. And so they when you look back, lads, yeah. Quadrant. When you look back, sorry, go on, Jeremy. No, no, I think they did stuff at sort of Quadrant Park and places. Like yeah, that. up north, like um, Eclipse and places like that. Yeah, we, we, we did we did the Eclipse. Yeah. Um, um, and they okay. and they became involved around about that time that we were doing Eclipse. Yeah, I think they uh, basically they took they took Eclipse basically, didn't they? <laughs> They took it off. Remember, because there were two nice chaps, Barry and Baz. <laughs> Do you remember them? Yeah, right. The Eclipse guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. they were they were nice chaps. They were, you know. And in one week, we went down there. I was with DJ Rap, you know. Mm. And we went down there, and it was like, you know, they were big lads. I know the lads you're talking about. You know, they were big lads. Stuart, and, like, Stuart and Baz. Everything has changed. No, not Stuart and Baz, <laughs> but the guys who took over, the security guys that took over. 
Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those big lads, you know, the ones. <laughs> you know, so they were like at the desk, and they were just massive. And we'd been dealing with Baz and Stuart. That's right, sorry, Baz and Stuart. We'd been dealing with them all that time. And so mm. suddenly these big geese were saying, it's all changed. You know, you ain't getting the money that you was meant to get and all this stuff. And I remember DJ Rap, she just, she wasn't standing for it at all, you know, and she just kicked off. Just said to my, yeah, you know, kicked off with the guy. Because I think he called her she or something like that. You know, he phoned someone backstage and said, yeah, that she's here or something. And she was like, what? <laughs> she kicked off and I'm thinking, would you just be quiet? You're just going to get my head kicked in, right? <laughs> and and that's when we realised it all changed. And it was like, ah, oh, they've fucking kicked him out. But so when you look back, lads, yeah, what really stands? I mean, you obviously got no regrets, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, because because a lot of the people they try and say that the bigger promoters were in it for the money, you know. And I know you guys, and I know you guys wasn't in it for money. And I was saying to Jeremy as well, you know, I'm sure that if you guys did another similar thing to gate crash a ball with a thousand people or 2000 people drinking champagne all night. You could have made that money that you made doing these raves anyway, doing these, you know, parties. I hate calling them raves. I hate that name, that word, you know? So, so it's almost like, and I, cause I know you, I know you guys did it for the love, you know? So what really stands out for you guys about that period? Cause I know you both got loads of things to do. So, we, we can kind of finish it up and just say what really fucking for me it was just it was just it was just the time it was the environment yeah. it was the hedonism it was the, the the community you know meeting all of these amazing people from different backgrounds different ethnicity you know being thrown into a completely different world um that was very loving and very fun um and and safe uh, for a while and safe really safe you know really safe and just you know really experiential just amazing experiences um that despite how high everyone was and how high i was at the time you know all of that stuff is totally you know imprinted on my brain yeah, i, re- I, I remember say. remember all of our parties i remember all of the parties i went to yeah know, even when i was off my head i can still remember so well a lot of yeah. these experiences that i don't remember you know when i went on then to be a reasonably successful dj for a while and I was playing out every night of the week, three times a night, sometimes at the weekend. I don't remember any of that. Sure, sure. I, I remember you, dude. We, I don't remember you, you, any had, of you had that. hair, hair past your shoulders. And, yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, it's full of none energy. of that. I mean, none yeah. of that was particularly resonant. You know, there's something. Yeah. You know, some. You know, some events like you know those you really a lot of fun, mate. events. You they, a lot you know, of fun. Things like Universe would stick in your head as being something really, and you'd remember it. But yeah. But I think this was that, and that's why we remember it. That's why we remember it beyond the drugs, because it it it, it seeped into every into our essence, you know. And and so it it was. Well, way we were living it. Drugs. We were yeah, living exactly, properly living you know? it. It was a it yeah. was it was a it was a lifestyle and a movement. Yeah, for sure. And I think yeah, it's now just become thing, more of a hobby, was, right? Yeah, but the it, other it, thing that was great was yeah. the fact that you know normally we would be in competition with each other. Yeah, actually, yeah. All of us work together. You That's know, true. And, and we, we, we all came together as one. That's true. And we we wanted to make sure everyone's party happened. It's true. Um, and, and you know it, it was like us against. The yeah. Authority. We're all friends. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, no, that's totally yeah. we're true. Friends. Because we all used to hang out with each other. Yeah, I mean, the man of doors we kicked together. off with you guys, the man <laughs> of doors you kicked off with us, and you're you're totally right. And that's why when I was in your where at the party that time, and I saw the people on the rooftop. It was like, no, you not get down, you know, yeah, yeah. because we're all I looking out for I one another. Told, I should have told the police that it was you that did it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, basically, the, the police after that party, they they kicked my door in. No uh, way. And I remember thinking, oh, it's six thirty in the morning. They're kicking the door in. That's good news. It must be police rather than gangsters. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Later, uh, yeah. Uh, um, and they throw me in the back of the car and they drive me all the way to Ipswich. That meanwhile, they're doing the same to Tintin's door. They're driving him to Ipswich. Well, and the thing is, you wasn't there that night, was you? So you I wasn't. A, I yeah, wasn't. No, no, so you I, both I, had I, good I, alibis, mate. So I, I, I was there. like, was I wasn't clever. even there. I, yeah. I, I was like, I wasn't there. And I said to Jeremy, just this time, just don't, don't say go. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had this useless solicitor who basically <laughs> said, oh, you're, you're better off sort of telling them. Because yeah, they, they had a lot of evidence that I was there and I was organising it. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mate. I, I ended up getting 240 hours community service. Oh, no uh, way. And, uh, 
and a sort of 500 quid fine. But the, the, the community service uh-huh. I did every Wednesday up in North London, which is great fun. So there, fun, was a, yeah. there was a special guest list um, at, at Fun City called the Gardening Club. So anyone that was doing community <laughs> service with me, and they were like, no way, like, dude, being, excellent. Bringing cars, selling drugs, all this sort of stuff. And they all got like 100 hours. I was on 240, and it was like, that's the most you can get before you get sent to jail. They were like, oh, yeah, no. You know, They're like, you're a top boy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I avoided, I avoided the, uh, I avoided the conviction. Uh, yeah, good, good. Yeah, no, and, Jamie, and Jamie got the criminal record, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I got they, I got convicted for the uh, the uh, Docklands Arena. I got, I got yeah, yeah, I got charged. Oh, right, I got a yeah. hundred quid fine. I, I never ever paid it. Yeah. What was it? Conspiracy <laughs> to cause a public nuisance or something? No, this yeah. was at your. No, no, no. Jeremy's charge. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, my, sorry. yeah, yeah. So the the energy, well, both, which is a big dance, charge. Dance eighty nine and and Effingham uh, Energy Summer Festival. I got arrested for as well, and they well, we got arrested for every party we did. Yeah, they got they, from which way. They, they spent a fortune on, they, they paid legal aid for me and they gave me a solicitor, a QC, a, you know, a, a huge wow. amount of, of help with the case. Uh, and then they told me on the day in court, oh, I'm best to just plead guilty because I'll get a lesser sentence. And the judge looks at me in the dock and goes, Mr. Taylor, for conspiracy to cause a public nuisance. He did it all with a big smile on his face. So I thought, oh, maybe he's sort of he's <laughs> worried about it. It's going to be a hundred quid fine. He goes, nine months in jail no way he leaves like a five second gap and yeah. i think dramatic it. pause and then he goes suspended and then he goes suspended for two years and then just like getting over that and and uh eight thousand pound fine uh oh. which back in 89 was a lot of money anyway it was a lot of money we, a lot we, more we than the telegram paid. fine they're doing now yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. if you yeah, remember yeah. back then, they they because you know people always talk about the criminal justice bill, and I always say to them, yeah, but hang on a sec, they had some type of bill before that, because you remember in '89 they were saying to us, it was if you got caught doing a party, it was six months compulsory in prison, yeah. and it was like twenty grand fine, or was it a ten grand fine, and all assets over twenty grand taken off of you. Yeah. So it's quite hefty, you know. Yeah. But yeah. um, so do you think it could happen ever again? Do you think there'd be a third? Because I'll be honest, you know, um, in this over this summer, I got contacted by BBC, I got contacted uh, by CNN and a few of the networks, CBS, and they were, they all kept saying, "Oh, you know, this is a third summer of love, third summer of love." It's, what no, do, what do you think about it? You're like, it's third not, summer it, of love? It's what not, are you it's talking not, about? Yeah. Why <laughs> do you think this is, doesn't happen so frequently? Why do you think we're not on, you know, the tenth summer of love? These things don't happen. These things happen once in a generation. They don't yeah. happen overnight. And why do you think no one's even tried to say this is a third summer of love? But it was really weird how all of the news agencies were all synced around this third summer of love. Obviously, come on, you know. Yeah. But um, do you see it happening well, again? They missed the point, haven't they? Because, yeah. really, yeah. you know, it's yeah. not just a reaction to people being locked up and there being no, 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 no legal venues open. It's, it's a little bit different from, from... Can you imagine, yeah, if we had all of these social networks and, you know, we had the internet yeah, and we had very... all of this then? Can you imagine how powerful we would have been? But then, yeah. then, but then I don't think it would have had the... The, I don't think it would have happened in the way that it happened. No, yeah. no. Everyone no. Be on yeah. the phone. Because, you know, everything is so easy for people now. Yeah, that's the thing with the phone. But they don't engage with it as much. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and they don't appreciate it because there. people are watching it through their phone. People had to fight to get to parties. Yeah. They had to like go through yeah. roadblocks and. Yeah, I mean, we had to fight so and many times, and you had to have front. Fields. Yeah. You had to have front, like <laughs> that police line standing in front of you. Yeah. It's like I don't want to fight with police. I don't want to you know, be in any kind of confrontation with police, but behind that police line is <laughs> energy. <part> <laughs> yeah. And I want to go. And so I have to now, I have to run through this line, you know? So, and so when we all, when we were doing that, you know, it was, it was done in a really fun way. It was never, and I say to people, because journalists will often say to me, um, yes, but that sounds very aggressive. I say, yeah, but, it was switched on and switched off. It was switched on for that brief period of time while you stand in front of that police line. And as you went past that police line, it was switched off and it was gone. 
yeah. you know and actually the majority of the people weren't weren't even and people wasn't even they, like they, they, they were just following the security who were who were who were marching them through the roadblocks yeah yeah me and and you know i, I did that as well you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. at the front like come on when we the new year's eve party that we did 88 to 90 uh 89 to 90 uh, we did it with biology. Sunrise got stopped. So they joined in. But um, I was a point. Oh, yeah, on that party. Yeah, it was in Slough in that Panasonic building. And we had, I, I led the convoy there. And when I, when I arrived at the convoy, the building was surrounded by soldiers and police in, in an interlocked chain. Yeah. And they had dogs, you know. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. We, we parked up and I got out and, you know, everyone came around me it was like I was really on top you know because suddenly I was like when I saw all the soldiers I just thought oh you know so when everyone got out of their vehicles they were all looking at me and I knew that it was on me they need me to get everyone going you know so I gave them all this like speech basically about just saying look if we don't get through this line it's over for acid ass parties we're never going to be able to have an acid ass party again and I'm saying this I'm going you're going to come with me and everyone's going yeah yeah <laughs> And so I just ran at this police line with everyone running behind me. And the police line just opened up basically, you know, and we ran. And when I got to the building, the police were low, the police were with my partners, Keith and Andy and Jarvis from biology. And they were loading our equipment into a van. <laughs> and I jumped up on this, like there was this like loading dock and I jumped up and I just like, you know, fucking screamed out. And, you know, the police just dropped everything there and then, and then they left the building, you know, and then, but to end that, when I was leaving that building, which is now like New Year's Day, you know, eight o'clock in the morning or something, they had a police tea van outside, you know, with the, all the crests on it and everything else. And they were given free tea up. And so I left that warehouse, the police, I from, I'm walking past a thing, and the policeman asked me if I wanted a cup of tea. You know, and I had a cup of tea and I was like, thanks so much, you know, happy new year, you know, and wandered off, you know, but, um, but whether that's going to happen again, it's, uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. Maybe, you know, it also, you know, it might happen like when we come to that period when everyone's, you know, part machine, <laughs> you know, or when everyone gets chipped or something, it might, there might be some kind of synthetic way that, we'd have to connect in, in early to the world or something, you know, but it won't but, happen. Like, it won't happen like that again. No, I mean. no, nothing can. It's the same way, like the LSD movement of the seventies, isn't it? There's always something because, and that's what I say to people to say, well, the difference with them and us is they had all that free love, you know, but by the time we come around, we, we'd already had HIV. And so that element wasn't open to us. So already it had changed. Cause if you remember, it wasn't all about, pulling loads of girls and you know pulling members of the opposite sex and going to have loads of sex which you would think it would bring that out in low you know you would think hang on ten thousand people on this love drug surely it was a mass orgy but it wasn't about that at all it was about that self-discovery you know and i'm sorry to keep bringing up conversations that would lead into much longer conversations but i just want to say i really appreciate you guys coming on the podcast do Right. As it's this is such a rare thing to have you both together like this you know because i mean i know you guys that appear in that is true actually i don't know we've done an, an interview of this length together have we jeremy no no i don't think we ever have i oh, see there you go you know <laughs> and i think it was like important that it come from us you know because yeah. i know you dudes you know and i know where you're coming from uh, and i know what you were about back then you know and it, and everything was such fun and like what you see you point out something that was uh, correctly Jeremy and that was we did all want to help one another you know it's like if you if energy got stopped bring everyone to Genesis Genesis gets stopped bring everyone to energy you know the sunrise got stopped and it's like you know I would say to Tony I don't care how many people you come with you know just however many people just come down you know bring hundreds of people it doesn't matter because we were all helping one another out and we I feel like we need to get back to that you know, we need to get back to that. And, and I think that currently with this identity politics, it's splitting everybody up into these small tribes, you know, and they're all fighting their own battles on their own front lines, but in these small tribes, you know, and I feel like we need to get back together again and we need to be one tribe. So I guess that's what we're kind of leaving it on. You know, let's get back to source. Let's get back to that one tribe. And do you think that you will ever stage... I mean, I suppose you're never going to say never, are you? 
You could think you'll ever do any events like, well, well, I tell you what I always get asked all the time. What about an energy reunion? Will you, will you ever think about doing anything like that? We thought about it a lot. Um, we don't want to open up. Yeah. Yeah. Potential issues with other people. That's I maybe would, like a burning man or something. Personally, I prefer to do something collaborative. Yeah. With, with other promoters from the era and just do something that was kind of you sure. know, a collaboration rather than do it as an energy. Yeah. What well, about like um, like a burning I mean, I have been, I've been planning planning something for about ten years and just okay. never really had the time to properly yeah. dedicate it to it. And um, and, uh, and oh, then last year, last year when I thought about doing something, um, I, I had like ten people all tell me that they were all doing something, and I was just like, you know, I don't want to get into this. I don't want to compete. Yeah, and that's also, the thing. I think there's one really important thing is that. I think almost it's impossible to recreate Can't recreate what it. happened then. Yeah. And there's a big part of me, you know, because I kept thinking, oh, maybe we'll do something, maybe we won't. And I look back and I think, maybe we just leave it as this yeah. wonderful memory and and sort of just move move forward. Right, right, because I feel it's maybe it, it, it's it's well, it's like a retired back. fighter keep coming back to fight again, doesn't yeah. he? You know? You know? yeah yeah it would have to be it would have to be very different to, yeah. to just trying to recreate what you did well that's uh, why i said burning man <laughs> something like that you know something just wild and fuck out there mad yeah. maxi you know mad yeah. venue but look I'll, I'll let you guys go again i really honestly i love you two yeah, guys. we're all getting to we could have a ballroom dance or something right <laughs> <laughs> Can you I mean, imagine when I, think about it, I was I was 18, 19 when we were doing energy, right? I'm now wow. 50. I'm now 50. But so yeah. there are people that were that were partying at our party that were 40. Crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because there's that's what I said. It wasn't all young now. people. Insane, dude. There, there's, and, there's, and there's 75 year olds out there that were at energy. And they've and you know, they've all infiltrated, you know, or TV, even radio. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Man, I mean you, you see the BBC have just done a new podcast. Oh I don't I've just been listening to it. Yeah, yeah, I was I on that. You're you're in it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I've only listened and, to about a couple of them. Tintin, have you have you heard it? No. What is it? Right, so it's called Ecstasy, the Battle of the Rave. Yeah. And it's part documentary and part fiction. And it Which goes is... like fifteen minutes or thirty minutes. And so you've got bits with, you know, you've got the, there's a lot of the stuff in the Northern Raves. Uh, yeah. Wayne, Wayne Which it. often gets missed out, doesn't it, you know? Yeah. But then it's got some top actors doing the fictional stuff. Yeah. But they've got hey, a, Adrian, Ev out. Adrian Evanson is... Who's playing you? Promoter. Who's playing you? <laughs> well, I think Adrian Evanson is playing a mixture between probably... Um, probably myself and Tony and Tar Tarquin, Tony and myself. You know, who's who's sort uh, of, you know, and then and then you've got the the drug dealer and you've got the you know, and it's actually I think it's really well produced. I do, I do. I'm I'm, trying, I'm getting them on the podcast. The producers, yeah. I'm getting them on. Yeah, the no, I was very and yeah. and the I was the impressed. Ones have been done. They've all been written by the same guy that does Barassic and Shameless and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's impressive. Really good. A really good dra dramatic writer they've really pushed the boat out this time and that's why i said this is different to any bbc production they've ever done yeah you know they've yeah. never well, gone this or far it's, or, it's, or it's a tv it's a uh, radio in fact it's i'm brilliant. doing the, the live uh radio tomorrow for them oh. but but yeah no it's the best the most forward advanced thing they've ever done they've never taken it that far do you remember yeah. you know they don't even like you to say mdma on on mm. one of their documentaries so, yeah, so it, 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 there's a warning at the beginning of each one uh warning there will be a lot of talk of of ecstasy <laughs> <laughs> a lot of references to ecstasy <laughs> yeah Excellent. But no, I mean, it, is, it is yeah really really well done so. it is really well done i'm going to get them on for sure mate because they, they yeah. want me to promote it so i was like okay this is how we promote it you know yeah, yeah. but listen again lads unless you is there anything else you want to add no, 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 that's, uh, great pleasure. listen we'll have to meet up for a beer when, when i'm in london definitely yeah. you've got my number contact yeah. me anytime yeah. again i really appreciate you guys being on i love you both and hopefully we can meet on a similar kind of platform sometimes yeah. in the future <laughs> yeah Loads of love, yeah? Nice okay. All right, take care, mate. Loads yeah. of love. See you soon. Do you think it's anything to do with a certain religion, do you think? No, is it's anything it. like that? No, it's no. more to do no. with a kind of a drug, isn't it?
to drive. Yeah, well, those that take it want to be, oh, be ashamed well. of themselves. According to the Sun, there were thousands of empty ecstasy wrappers littering the floor of the 250-foot-long hangar. Drugs, sex, sensation. Some newspapers have called Acid House Music a sinister and evil cult which lures young people into drug-taking. The message is certainly getting across. The organisers kept the location secret until the very last moment, which was the main reason, according to the papers, why there were so few police here and they were unable to act. Drug-crazed kids, some as young as 12, boogied for eight hours yesterday at Britain's biggest ever ecstasy bash. The party took place here, infiltrated by reporters from the Mail and the Sun. There's, there's meant to be a drugs-related craze. What do you know about acid house music? It must affect the brain in some way. Unless it's just the music that does it. it. Oh, All no. them lights flashing don't do you any good either, do it? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't even go in the no. pub where them lights are. Oh, no, they drive no. you mad, don't they?